Now, this could be because you know most of you Latino countries, if not all, you know, um, being colonized by the Spanish, very Catholic. Yeah. It might be a Catholic cultural thing. Uh -huh. I'm willing to accept that. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm not. I don't have any grand conclusion, but I notice just such a strong cultural distinction in mm -hmm. terms of the way that uh, folks from the different um, countries um, that you know fall under the banner. We're dealing with another you know blanket term for different cultures, et cetera. You know, of uh, Latino. Um, that they did not, they did not have this hyper religiosity, and uh, that you see from different variety, you know, different um, you know subgroups within the banner of black, and I, and I've had the experience when talking with you know quote white people, you know, and folks you know primarily European descent. Um, in many cases, if not most cases, they don't understand that it's a very different cultural experience. Yeah. Because I believe you, you were born in, in a family that was secular, correct? Yeah, I sure was. Yeah. yeah. You weren't going to church every Sunday, going to choir practice, um, you, know, you know, being involved in this. Um, you know, I, I, I went on youth conventions that actually um, um, exposed me to, to you know, different cities. I came to Boston. You know, I, so I'm not going to say it was bad. You know, the people were great people. The biggest thing we had to worry about in our church was crotchety old ladies. <laughs> I mean, they were salt of the earth people. I love them. They are wonderful people. Uh -huh. You know, um, I just believe that they're latched onto a set of beliefs that have served their purpose in every culture. Uh -huh. But I think that we're at a point in human history where, just as a child gets to a point where they can put aside the Santa Claus idea, mm -hmm. the big guy who's going to be good to you, you're going to give you nice things if you're good, and give you a lump of coal, punish you if you're bad. You know, I think as a as a human race and as different cultures within the human race, we're at a point where we know how to control enough things in our environment, mm -hmm. you, know, that, you know, we don't need to pray to the sun gods or pray to the rain gods and all, you know, because that's where a lot of religious beliefs come from, this idea that, you know, how are we going to survive? Okay, you know, we don't know, let's ask. We're at a point now where we've, we've figured out enough things that we can live pretty comfortable lives without um, having to, you know, believe that there's someone who's going to make things okay for us, you know. Um, we've, we've, I believe, we've evolved enough as a race, as a human race, that we, in order for us to be good people, we don't need to say, oh, we must follow a rule book that says, you know, mm -hmm. don't kill. Every culture, regardless of their different belief systems, has figured that out, you know, and we talk closely enough with each other as mm -hmm. a human race now that, you know, we can be good without having these kinds of rules, which, uh, you know, when it gets down to it, when, if you really look at the different religious rules, mm -hmm. they're almost impossible to live by in our society. Yeah. I, I believe there's a guy who tried to you know, tried to live by them for a year, uh, the, like like the Mosaic laws, and I, th I heard about this a few years ago. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and um, I don't know if he was doing it just to demonstrate, or if he was you know a devout believer, etc. Mm. But you know, when you really look at certain things that are in the text, you know, and try to apply them to today, it doesn't work. Well, as I remember, you know. he was a, a skeptic, and he was trying okay. to prove just how ludicrous it was to have these types of expectations, especially of these conflicting things. Yeah. That one yeah. must live his life. Um, so what, what you're saying that a, a lot of us, we understand this now. Um, and we do not need to, we're not in an era anymore where we believe, need to rely on a supernatural thing to help us change these things in our lives. You know, to help us, uh, you know, we, we rely on medicine rather than praying. We, you know, we, we rely, rely on our hard work for something like work rather than money falling out of the sky. Right. But right. in certain communities, um, and this is something that uh, Sikivu, Sikivu Hutchinson, we're also going to talk about, mm -hmm. who she said recently that in the black community, saying you're an atheist is like, you're, you're, like, like you're creating yourself hood. persona like non grata. Like, she like, says, yeah, that, and as absolutely. far as how much homosexuality is, is a taboo subject, and a lot of people are not... To say you're an atheist, yes, worse. and in American yeah. in American polls, we have this thing that the very lowest thing mm -hmm. of the or the the biggest concept, the biggest identity that people obje are objecting to before voting for a presidential candidate is is if he's an atheist. In the black community, it's not even like 
it's, it's a very serious, it's not just yeah. running for president, it's about being a member of your community. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, we want to talk about is um, coming out, right? Coming mm -hmm. out of the closet. Mm -hmm. What we have is um, Norman, Norm Allen, Norm Allen Jr. He's the executive director of African Americans, uh, African American Humanists, or Africans Americans for Humanism. And he wrote an article around 2002, you know, about black atheists coming out of the closet. Which um, you know, I only came across recently. Mm -hmm. What what came across recently was a couple about two months ago in the L.A. Watts Times, uh, Sakivu Hutchinson. She wrote this thing, and it was it was a really interesting thing. She writes that it's coming out of the closet, and perhaps today we're a little bit more receptive. You know, just like seven years later or five mm -hmm. years later, we're a little bit more receptive. Now she had a follow up interview in Alternate, and she kind of she explained some of these things about you know, say like white. Atheists, not quite, they're kind of criticizing how backwards, quote unquote, backwards black people are because they believe this and that, and without really understanding the kind of liberation theology behind it. You know, why would black people be needing religion? Why would they be looking towards God to come out of the shackles? You know, whereas white people, it's, it's kind of, they can choose to believe it or not. It's not so intrinsic to being accepted as part of your community. Right. Right. So, I mean, you read that article, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, um, you know, sorry for the repeated disclaimers. You know, I'm not a sociologist. Right. So, you're you're not even a representative of yeah, any group or anything me. like. I represent me. But you well, you have the experiences. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, the theme of you know God as a liberator uh -huh. comes up in different religions, um, and it makes sense because you know while we we've mentioned a few times about, about under the banner of black you have mm -hmm. um, people with who come from different countries who have different cultural experiences something that is shared unfortunately is you know generally is um, a history of oppression mm -hmm. and so there are things in the Bible like a lot of folks will focus on you know the um, exodus story mm -hmm. um, you know that that uh, the Jewish culture you know um, uses as um, as its um, um, liberation, um, you know, the whole liberation story. Mm -hmm. And there are many versions of, of um, religious belief in the black community, and I say versions because I believe it's both in Christianity and, I, and also in the Nation of Islam that, you know, makes analogies or sometimes may even say that, you know, this is supposed to be prophesying. Mm -hmm. um, the, the whole idea of blacks in slavery and, you know, and and I think it works, you know, um, it works because it has a happy ending. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. If, if the story ended up differently, so, I don't think it would be so, uh, such a compelling right. thing to latch on to. And, you know, and, um, yeah, so it's, 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 it's a compelling... Well, no, you told me about a conference that's coming up this fall. Um, down in Atlanta. Okay, now yeah, what is yes. that? Uh, a first conference of... Um, a black, it may, may say black atheist or black non-theist. Okay, uh -huh. yeah. Um, I avoid the A word um, <laughs> frequently because um, for a few reasons that, number one, it is um, one of those hot button words. Um, mm -hmm. An analogy I use sometimes is, is the word militant. Yeah. Uh, if someone, if you use the word militant, many people, there's just a lot of baggage that comes with it. Right. Whereas sometimes if you talk to someone who self-identifies as a militant, you find out, you know what? No, they're not some, you know, Yahoo who's trying to take over the government. You know, they're, you know, in many cases might be just looking for, you know, equal sorts of treatment and things and willing to, like the U.S., <laughs> of say, you know, like look on New Hampshire, you know, live free and die, you know. Sometimes it's just like <laughs> um, radical chic, you know, and yeah. they're youngsters. Yeah, that too, that but, too. But with the, the atheist <laughs> word, we're like, yeah. I think by avoiding that, the big A word, we're, we're basically redefining. We're like saying we're not going to let, you know, the dominant group tell yeah. us that we should be labeled as being against to what they think is reasonable. Right. We're not eccentric because we do not believe exactly. in this stuff. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. We're yeah. Just yeah. 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 Rational I, I mean, in my, my view is, you know, we are all born atheists. Uh -huh. um, while there are studies that suggest that, that children um, you know, who are, have not been influenced by external society do have a tendency to believe in um, 
in some sort of being behind things, making things happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the prevailing thoughts, at least in terms of what I've read, and maybe people who say other things, the reason behind that is that generally, as a, when you think of it as a survival skill, if something's moving, it's safer to think.